Blessed be the name of Jesus. Today we want to take this part of the scripture we read here in the book of Romans in chapter 6. We'll speak under the title, The Wages of Sin is Death, but the Gift of God is Eternal Life through Christ Jesus. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. What we study in the book of Romans is just leading us to one single truth which is so important. And the whole Bible, the Holy Scriptures, will lead us to the only one truth we need in ourselves. And it is Jesus Christ is our Savior. There is redemption. That is the important thing for human beings. The discussion here in the book of Romans, since you start in chapter 1 and you go throughout the whole book, you will find the discussion and the antagonism between death and life. Sin and eternal life. There is always the struggle between the flesh and the spirit. What the Lord is doing here is just showing that there is always that battle between the flesh and the spirit. Between evil and good. And that we as human beings... Since we are in the center, in this battlefield, we are the target of the enemy, but we are the aim of God. So what the Lord is showing us is, you are there, this situation is there, but there is a truth that you must know and be sure of, and it is in Jesus Christ, there is redemption. In Jesus Christ, there is eternal life. The sin will kill people, but Jesus will give life. That is the message. Sin will kill people, will kill their spiritual life. But Jesus Christ will resurrect the person, will give life. The Lord Jesus will destroy with his power sin in ourselves. All the things that are, that are withholding human beings from receiving the Lord's blessing, the Lord Jesus will destroy it with his great might. Mightier is him. That is in us than him that is in the world. So that truth should never depart from your heart and from your mind. Why? Because in your walk through this life, remember we are pilgrims, we're strangers on this earth. While we walk through this life, you will find yourself facing the same struggle always. Not yesterday, not today, always. Until you finish your course down here, you will be facing the same problem. You will be facing the same situation. There is nothing else you will have to battle while you are down here. And then you must remember the truth that must remain in your heart. In Jesus Christ is eternal life. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is our redeemer. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is our redemption. Hallelujah. 
Jesus Christ is our Lord. He is the one that gives us forgiveness. He is the one who will destroy the power of darkness. He is the one that will help you to finish your course, your race in victory. And someday when you finish all this situation down here, someday we will finish. Yes, there are battles. There are trials. There are tribulations. There is pain. There are tears. There are many things in life that will make it a little hard. But remember that truth. The wages of sin is death. So you will never give up. You never surrender to sin. Because the wages of sin is death. It doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter because your sentiments are not good. Your sentiments will change. Sometimes overnight. Yesterday, you felt you were in the summit. Next day, you feel you are down in the valley. Someday you feel you are victorious. Sometimes you will feel, I cannot make it. Feelings are not good. Sentiments cannot take the rule in ourselves. We must believe the Lord, must believe the word of God. No matter my condition, no matter my situation, no matter my sentiments, my feelings, Jesus Christ is Lord. And the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ. That said, sometimes you'll have to struggle. Sometimes you'll have to face the problems, the situations, battles, and the devil will come to accuse you and to tell you you are not good for anything. You cannot do it. You are not good to be a Christian. You don't have the strength you need. You don't have the moral standards you need. Many things will come across in your mind. But something must be clear for the believer. We are not saved by ourselves. Jesus Christ is our Savior. We are not slaves to sin. Because Jesus Christ set us free. We were, yes, in the reading we read, it says, we were servants to sin. We were past tense. We were servants to sin. We used to be slaves to sin and to the devil. We used to walk in darkness. All those things are past tense. And there was no fruit from that condition. When we were slaves to sin, when we used to walk in darkness, there was no reward. The only thing, the only result of sin is what the verse we took as a title says, the wages of sin is death. When we used to be like that, when we were servants to sin, there was no reward. We were dead in our trespasses. We were dead in our sin. We couldn't do many good things. Just pain and bitterness. No hope at all. We didn't live. We just existed. There was no life. When you concede your life to sin, when you give up, when you surrender to sin, you don't live anymore. Just exist. That's why you will not be able to see 
beyond. Because you are not living now. And then the person will not be able to sing songs of praises unto the Lord. And the person will not be able to shout for joy into the presence of God. And some things will manifest as evidences that the person doesn't have life anymore. So that is the result of sin in the life of people. You will see this poor world as we see it today. Tears, pain, bitterness, disgrace. It's a terrible condition. But when you come to see what the Lord does, you will find yourself in a different position. It doesn't matter what the situation is. Once you may believe in the Lord, once you call Jesus to be your Lord and your Savior, once you believe the Lord and His Word, and you surrender yourself into the hands of the Most High, in spite of problems, in spite of conditions, there will be life in you. And nobody will be able to take you from the hands of the Lord. Are you with me? So the sin is terrible. Sin will destroy. Sin will kill. The person will not have joy anymore. So you, you will notice that even with a person which is living the Christian life. If at any time the person gives up to sin and something happens, the person will not feel joy anymore. But there is always a remedy when we are in the hands of the Lord. There is always a remedy. The remedy is the Lord. I will just read for you some of the verses just to emphasize a little bit. It says, But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Yes, we were Servants of sin, but now there is a decision in the heart. Remember, if you take the decision to serve God, nobody can just come and take away that decision from you. The Lord gave you the opportunity to decide for Him. And it says, You obeyed, it means decision in the heart. You decided from now on, I will not serve the devil. I will not serve sin. Now I'm going to serve the Lord. And then in verse 18 it says, Then being made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. When you decide to obey the Lord, you are set free. We were singing the song. I'm so glad. Jesus set me free. When you decide to obey the Lord, you are made or are set free. It is what the Word of God says. Some people say, Pastor, whew, it is a hard way some people may say I think it's not possible to make it I tell you don't let the devil lie to yourself the devil is a liar Jesus he made free he sets free 
when you decide for the Lord, He will set you free. I'm totally sure of what I'm telling you. I was but a child when I decided to give my life over to the Lord. I was five. Now, a little more than 50 years in the ways of God. And I tell you, yes, it is possible. Yes, the Lord is mighty enough to set us free and to keep us in His way as long as we want to. Now I am not a child. I'm not a teenager. I'm not that young now. I'm an adult person. No matter what it is, the Lord is always there. He set me free. I am free and I will finish my course according to the word of God. So it is possible. When you see all the temptation, the enemy, sin coming across your way, you have it. The power to take a decision and to say, devil, no more. Sin in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. You have the power to do so. Because Jesus made us free from sin. And then we became the servants of righteousness. And then in verse 19, it is just saying something, therefore, my brother, therefore, as you yielded your members, servants to uncleanness and to iniquity, even so now, yield your members, servants to righteousness and to holiness. So it is a decision you must take. Beforehand, you used to yield your, your members. It means your body. You were yielding yourself to sin, to iniquity. Then it says, now take the decision to yield your members. It means yourself, your body, your spirit, your soul, your whole being. Make it servants to righteousness. Present yourself as a living sacrifice before the Lord. Surrender yourself. Take a decision. It is good and it is sweet to serve the Lord. It is good and sweet to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just verse 22 and I will finish because time is always running so fast. But now, being made free from sin and become servants to God, you have your fruit unto holiness. And the end is everlasting life. Listen to this. Now that you are free, and now that you are servants to God, your fruit is holiness. And the end is eternal life. So I'm just saying again. Listen. Now that you are servants to God, you live in holiness. But the end of your life is eternal life. So it means it is progressive. The fruit of your life is holiness now. But the end of your life is eternal life. Nothing will stop you from receiving that wonderful crown the Lord has promised to the one who loved him. Once you decide to serve God, the fruit of your life now will be Holiness in the name of Jesus. But at the end, 
you will receive the crown that the Lord has prepared for those who loved him. Amen. So today, I just want you to have this thing clear in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, in your spirit. Never give up. The wages of sin is death. Don't forget it. The wages of sin. In other words, the salary of sin is death. So if you work for sin, the salary you will receive is death. But then it says, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus. Never forget that truth. I say it again. Remember, my brother. Remember, the salary of sin is death. It is up to you whether you want to serve sin. But the gift of God is eternal life. In Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. I'd like you to stand.